Okay, friends, how are you? I hope you all are fine. So today's topic that I'm going to discuss is about reality. What is reality? Something that we see, something that we witness, all the things that is happening in the world that are responsible for making what the world is and which, on which we rely upon, the ideas on which the world is working, all these things are called reality, isn't it? Something that has an existence of its own, something that is objectively convinced about its existence, which may not necessarily need our approval or may not necessarily need our definition, something that we may not necessarily recognize, but those things which actually happening in front of us, behind us, above us, below us, inside us, all those things which are in on us to make who we are and how we have made them by which we have facilitated our growth, all those things compile together and makes a reality. Anything that you see, anything that you know, anything that you understand, anything that you have witnessed, anything that you experience, all those things are considered as real, as reality. So this is what the reality is. Okay. Now, uh, now one more thing. Let me dissect this what the reality is, part by part. To have a reality, first and foremost, we need to accept the thing. Once we accept the thing, once we accept the thing by us, of course, the thing needs an acceptance. It needs to be accepted. For it, it, needs, it needs to be accepted for its meaning. And once it is accepted, it gains the meaning. Acceptance gains the meaning. Once it is accepted, it gains the meaning. And once it is, has the meaning of its own, which is given by us, now it becomes the truth. And anything that is true, we are going to believe it. And we once the truth, we believe it becomes a reality. So anything that we don't believe, because we are not convinced by the existence, because no doubt no one accepted, no one accepted, now that thing is not going to be a reality. So that is the basic principle, that is the basic premises that I have set to what makes a real and what not makes a real. What are the things, what are the, what are the elements which are responsible for constructing the very idea of credibility? And those credibility, those ideas which actually are responsible for constructing the very definition of, constructing the very arena of credibility, That is what the reality is. Okay, so the reality that we see, reality that we existed, the reality that we are experiencing, we accepted it. And once it is expect, accepted, it becomes a truth. And once it is truth, it is meaningful. That is why it is a true. And we, we are convinced. And anything that is convincible, anything that is a credibility, it becomes a reality. That is what the reality is. That's, that's what the reality is. The sound that I am speaking, the sound that I am speaking, which in fact, it's been accepted. That is the reason why it has a meaning. It has a meaning because of which you have accepted. And once it has accepted, because those sound has already registered in your brain. Because of which it matches, this sound is matching with the sound that has been registered in your brain and you get a meaning. On, on which it is, once it is accepted, it gains a meaning and it, it becomes the truth. And that truth is a reality. The language that I am speaking is a real language. But if I speak a certain another sound, so this sound is not registered in your brain because of which you are not going to identify the sound and it doesn't match it to the sound that is registered in you in any way. You have not heard this sound in not only in TV, not only in any other language, not only any movies, not anywhere. In your upbringing till now, whatever things registered in your brain are responsible for making the reality. So this sound that I am speaking, this sound that I am speaking, this sound, if it is not been matching with the sound that is with anything that is registered in your brain till now, in the paradigm till now, what in fact has happened is that this sound is not going to be accepted. And once it is not going to be accepted, it is not going to be meaningful. Anything that is not going to be meaningful is not true. And you are not going to believe it true. If you don't believe a truth, if you don't believe that sound, because it is not convincible, it is not, it is, it, there is lack credibility. Because it, it doesn't fall in any category. It doesn't fall in any category of human activities, in human logic, in human philosophy, in human theory, in human way of life, in human school of thought. Those sound, then it is not a reality. 
any activity, any appearance, if it is not been matching or with the activity that is already registered in our brain, or if those appearance, those activity doesn't support it, doesn't show any kind of a possibility to happen with the logic, with the scientific community, with the experimentation, with the observation, and with the empiricism, then the thing is going to be negated. Then the thing is going to be called as a nonsense. Because it shows, it, it vehemently reveals, it vehemently, vigorously compels us not to believe that thing because we are, because with the help of the certain scientific community, we are convinced that nothing of such thing can happen or appear. That is why we call it a nonsense. And anything that is nonsense is unbelievable. Anything not believable is not a reality. So that is the reason why ghosts and all these things we consider as an unreal thing. Because we def define those things under the very yardstick of the human logic, scientific community and empiricism and all the kind of observation. Okay, that is the thing. Abhi yehi hai reality. A very limited arena se mein isko define kar diya, very simplified versions of what reality and what not the reality is. Lekin, abhi baat yehi pe mein kahunga, lekin, how much you know how much you know and the human logic that you are so relying upon blindly is too insig insignificant to the happenings which is in the universe. Something that has happened in the back of our house that I cannot identify, that I cannot figure it out, that I cannot identify it with, that I cannot understand. That may not necessarily be it is not real, but it simply means that I need to expand my knowledge. I need to include more formulas, more theories. I need to create more yardstick. I need to construct, I need to invent more logics, more different logics to understand that thing. That is what the beauty of this world is. You can never satisfy where you are. It always can add more. It always can, it always can struck wowed you it always can astonish you with a spectacular with a with a magnificent with a grand with a grandeur of what the world has to provide what we have yet to witness the best is yet to come this kind of a quotation really helps the people that inspire us so the thing which i want to tell is that if you if you are satisfied with how much you know is enough then perhaps it is your mistake. Perhaps your our brain has been paralyzed somewhere. The idea that which you have gathered through an institution when your upbringing in your in your which have been indoctrinated to you and which are convincible because by applying those things you are gaining certain amount of recognition, certain amount of status, and so you don't need to go beyond what you already know because there's no need to because I am already having a very great life. If scientists would have think in that way we wouldn't have where we are now if maybe 100 years ago 18th century with the people in the scientist community or if the people of intellectuality the people with the intellectual discourse doesn't go beyond what they know at that point of time we never have this sophistication we never have this uh, instrument to facilitate us more profoundly more spectacularly more uh, unbelievably what once upon a time they would have the, the things which were invented at that point of time like Graham Bell's phone it's a very big phone or this uh, jet engine or this clumsy very heavy oil consuming vehicle ambassador if people at that point of time were satisfied with how much we have achieved is enough then we wouldn't have where we are now they push their limitations, they question, they try to disagree their own affirmation. Now they have reached to this point with the ample amount of ample amount of sophistication which are surrounding us. So similarly, similarly, how much you know, if you started believing that how much I know is enough, then you can never recreate yourself. Then you can never be more than what you are. And you you will always be what you have been for so long and that is not going to get where you want to go in order where in order to go in order to go and grow more than what you are now you have to question all the beliefs you need to question all the understanding you need to reshape you need to restructure your brain's paradigm 
and that can only happen when you started cross examining yourself when you try to critically examine evaluating yourself that how much i know is it the way it is or is it something else you need to bring different interpretation you need there is an indispensable need to include different perspective different perception about how the life is going what the reality is that is actually my thing the reality that we are living the reality that we are living perhaps may not necessarily be a reality in fact it can be a reputation it also can be a hallucination the reality it's shocked i am astonished by the fact that the reality that we are living may not necessarily be a reality in itself it may somewhere it may somewhere be a reputation of the same idea which my forefather has created applied and it is not their fault what i am doing myself what i am doing right now perhaps what i am doing is actually been taught by my parents and you cannot blame my parents is because my parents were also the mouthpiece of society what my parents are teaching me they were been taught by their parents and what their parents were teaching because they were been taught by their grandparents their grand grandparents this system keeps on going instead of going forward we are circulating ourselves what we are doing we are doing education getting a job marrying then in uh, then, then then forwarding our knowledge to them our advice then they are educating getting a job marrying then they are forwarding their message to them indirectly the reality which actually it has been stopped only on the scientific community things are progressing but in a social dichotomy social paradigm things are still the same of course there are certain uh, it holds there are certain trends which have been changing which in fact is a good thing whether it is a good or bad i don't know but at, at, it is actually a change which in fact is equivalent to the very definition of what a life is all about as long as there is a life there would be change so change is inevitable you cannot keep a thing the way it is it is automatically going to be evolved you cannot control that thing evolution is indispensable evolution is inevitable you cannot restrict you cannot prohibit it cannot obstruct the change change is going to find its own place and once it is once it is going to happen it is going to happen in, in all its glory so you need to question yourself how much you know is it enough and if you really are satisfied with your life with the things that you have known perhaps perhaps you have gained wisdom perhaps you have gained but if your knowledge is not keeping you happy then you need to question yourself if my life is is it what i want or is my want is been someone else perception if the things that i want in my life is it my own or is my want are been given by someone else there are so many things so abhi baat ye hai कि ऑल द पीपल ऑल द पीपल हेयर शुड नॉट सीट एंड शुड नॉट शुड नॉट कीप ऑन फॉलोइंग वॉट एवरी वन इज फॉलोइंग बिकॉज वेन यू कीप ऑन फॉलोइंग वॉट एवरी वन इज फॉलोइंग वॉट इनफैक्ट इनफैक्ट यू आर डूइंग इज दैट यू लाइक आवर पेरेंट्स हार बीन पेरालाइज बाय द सोसाइटी वॉट आई एम टीचिंग यू सी वॉट मे क्या पढ़ा रहा हूँ वॉट आई एम टीचिंग इज वॉट आई हैव बीन taught from my parents what my parents are teaching me they have been taught by their forefathers but the thing here is that who are the person who are responsible for generating those thoughts those thoughts are actually are the idea which are circulated in the society and you never know you never you never know why you pick it pick up those idea because that is how our human mind is you are you somehow are designed the human nature has been designed in such a way that we pick up things from the environment and we pick up things by our environment simply because of the reason that those ideas were circulated in the society at that point of time so what my parents are gathered is what was happening at that point of time what was happening what the idea was circulating what i which are the idea which are glorifying on that point of time they have adopted those idea and they have passed it to me and i have I'm going to pass it to my children but if i try to question is it still relevant today is those idea which i have been pick up from uh, the society from the from the people around me because because family is the mouthpiece of society no doubt in it i am a representative of family so eventually these things are designed in such a way that you cannot escape the very quick mire 
You simply cannot escape the very quick mire, very complexities, very intricacies of how the human life has been designed, which involved the multiple arenas of socialism, psychologism, politics, politics, politicals, and emotionalism. So all those things are somewhere gathered there. Are they are responsible for constructing the very idea of who we are and who we are are actually been constructed by all those areas which are responsible for defining what the reality is. Those are controlling us and we are controlling the reality. Abhi, abhi mein baat, abhi, 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 one more thing I found out to tell my Hindi is my Hindi bhot disaster. I am a failure in Hindi but still I try to do it. Why do we doctor? Kyo banna hai? Kisi bhi, kisi ko puchho. If you ask any person, if you pick up, pick up, pluck out any boy in a, in a classroom or any person, random boy, the what you want to become? His answer is either I want to become a pilot or I want to become a doctor. Why you want to become a doctor? Why you want to become a doctor? What is so fascinated about being a doctor? If anyone wants to become a doctor, if anyone wants to become an actor, if anyone wants to become a, a kung fu fighter, if anyone wants to become a pilot, we can understand because there is a certain amount of glorification, there is a certain amount of uh, glamour in that, doing those professions. But what about being a doctor? Doctor mein kya hai? Kisko kha, kisko khun person? No one wants to, uh, no one wants to deal with a human body, the blood and all this thing. But when we were young, those ideas were circulated in our society. And nobody told us you need to become a doctor, but we have picked up things from the society at that point of time because those ideas were very dominating. We somehow have picked up those profession that I want to become this, I want to become that. Not because it is, it is not what I want. It is because which I was taught. I have picked up from the environment. And when I pick up from the environment, I realize it has been fixed in my brain. And once it has been fixed in my brain, I've start, when I grow up, those ideas were still there. Those ideas were still visible. Those ideas were still alive in my brain somewhere because by becoming that I will get recognition. Abhi ye kitna lecture, kitna kitna area mein disorganized ni mein bol raha hoon. Ham lo wo kyo kar rahe hai ki society, wo ham lo kyo follow kar rahe hai ki society chahte hai. Kyunki wo nahi kar rahe hai sa recognition nahi milega. Recognition nahi milega to ham lo happiness nahi rahe hai. Ham ko happy, if we don't follow what societies are expecting us to be then if we try to isolate ourselves from the very way the societies have planned us, societies defined us, that we invariably are not going to get recognition, not going to get status, not going to get dignity. Because when you don't, be, be, because in order to get a dignity from the society, you have to be doing things which the societies have defined and dignified. Supposedly, if my friend, I don't, if I don't behave the way my friend is not, if my don't behave, my friend is not, uh, if I don't behave on the very definition of how a friend wants me to behave, then perhaps I will lose the very dignity, will lose the status, will lose the respect which he is about to give only by matching me with the behavior which he has already been defined in his mind that this is what the dignified behavior is. So similarly, in order to gain recognition, in order to gain a certain amount of dignity, in order to gain a certain amount of, in order to secure a status, what we do eventually is that we comply upon the society and indirectly society Indirectly, the society control us, and those those adherents somewhere lose the very independence, lose the very ability to think critically. So, abhi aap log audience ko mein, leaders ko mein, listeners ko mein yehi bolta hoon ki the reality jo hai, ye kahi na kahi society, kahi na kahi psychology, kahi na kahi emotional, kahi na kahi needs, all jo psychological, physiological needs hai, ye ye involved hai. These are the highly active participating in deciding controlling the very behavior very activity and a very selection of the reality that you are going to live that is the thing so what you need to do is that you need to register yourself in a university and only on that only on that areas india can develop because only on those places research centers the ideas were critically been examined. People become liberated. Ye kisi paan dukan ke saamne tum daru peene se, chigret peete rehne se knowledge nahi milega. Waha ke, waha pe reputation hoga. Lekin university ke professors ke dimaag khule hoye hai. Un logo se sikho ja ke. Tabhi aage badhoge. Padhoge to badhoge. 
Otherwise, what eventually is going to happen is someone else is going to control you without even realizing that they are controlling you. In order to escape the very techniques that they are using to control you, you need to open your block. Nobody can defeat you. Nobody in this world can defeat you until and unless you don't open, you don't broaden the horizon of your intellectuality. Because that person, your existence, your existence is nothing more than what you know. How much you know is your existence. If you want to be more than what you are, what you need, there is an indispensable need to expand your horizon by including more ideas, by critically examining, by evaluating, by cross-checking, by cross-examining, by scrutinizing, by showing strict determination of disagreeing your own blind fate, blind ideas that you have believed for so long about through the scientific community, through all the things that the science has told it is here, you, start, you now one, you need to disagree upon what science has told you. Forget about others. You started to question, you started to question your own system. Then only, only then you can expand your horizon. And once you have gained that status, once you have gained, no one, no one can ever defeat you intellectually. That is the only thing I can tell. And a person can defeat you only when you only when you somehow has allowed him to defeat you because somehow you are convinced that I am not that strong in terms of intellectuality, in terms of knowledge, in terms of wisdom. So in order to be more than what you are now, what you know is what you do is that you need to read more books because in only the books ideas are there. A person who is worth telling something is going to publish a book first. So, okay. So that is the only thing I can tell. Thank you very much. Thank you.